אוקיי, okay, אנחנו עוברים לדובר האחרון של היום, דוקטור ג'יימס ואן דה ולדה. ג'יימס הינו מרצה במרכז למדעי המדינה באוניברסיטת ג'ון הופקינס, שם הוא מלמד קורסים בנושאי מודיעין והמלחמה בטרור. יש לו ניסיון של יותר מ-20 שנה בנושאי ביטחון לאומי, במסגרת עבודתו באקדמיה הוא כתב מאמרים רבים בנושא לוחמה בטרור, נשק גרעיני, הסחר בסמים, איסוף וניתוח מודיעין, סייבר וההיסטוריה של דיפלומטיה. בעבר כהן כממונה מטעם הבית הלבן בנושאי פיקוח על הנשק הגרעיני תחת הנשיא ג'ורג' וו בוש, היה גם מרצה באוניברסיטת ייל, שרת במשרד החוץ, היה קצין בחיל הים האמריקאי, הוא קיבל את תואר ה-BA של אוניברסיטת ייל ואת הדוקטורט מבית הספר פלצ'ר בנושא מדינה ומשפט. דוקטור ג'יימס Shalom. I was just pulled aside and told that it's a particular Israeli honor to be the very last speaker of an 11-hour conference. <laughs> Publicly, I wish to thank Professor Ben Israel and Julie and her staff. It's a real honor to be here uh, in Israel. Um, I must say I've been in uh, counterterrorism issues now for the past 10 years. working mostly for the U.S. government, and I've begun to feel like the force gump of U.S. counterterrorism. First, I worked in the detention facility in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and that issue somewhat publicly blew up. Then I worked counter-branding issues for President Bush and some of the rhetoric, the words that we use to brand our, our collective enemy, Al-Qaeda. That kind of blew up publicly. Then I studied... Inspire a magazine and al-Qaeda's online publications, and sadly that blew up in Boston. And now, most recently, I can admit that I am also an associate at Booz Allen Hamilton, whose stock has just dropped 25 percent. But luckily, I'm not important enough to, uh, to uh, own any stock. Um, but I'm very disturbed to see what happened. I'm very proud of my com company in general. And um, I hope we survive well. Now, it's typical for a, uh, a person in the United States to begin a presentation with a, with a joke. And I'm told that in Israel, it's typical to begin with some sort of an apology. Whoops. Well, I'm a Roman Catholic American here in Israel for the first time. So all I can say is I feel very, very guilty that I have no joke. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But what I do have is an axiom. To quote a strategist, or maybe to paraphrase, you may not be interested in cyber jihad, but cyber jihad is interested in you. The cyber domain is the fifth domain of warfare, as you all know. But what's unique about this domain is that it was created by man. Imagine if Delta, um, American Airlines, El Al, all owned airspace and allowed Al-Qaeda to fly through it. Don't you think they'd have a say in that activity? And you all know what I'm talking about. Al-Qaeda has... A, uh, a series of official websites where they propagandize the world. They have a number of mirrored sites, and they have hundreds to thousands of wannabe sites, people who follow their message worldwide. It's through this Internet that Al-Qaeda maintains a global following. It's through this Internet that they maintain a certain command and control. At the moment, Al-Qaeda uses the web for inspiration, recruitment, planning, information sharing, organization, web posting. And at the moment, the West more or less tolerates this. A more aggressive, conservative U.S. government might tolerate it less, but in general, the West allows this to happen. The next level, however, might be less tolerable for the West. Should jihadists move to CNE, probes, persistent denial of service, web defacement, I think you'll see a less permissive attitude from the West. These acts would probably not be acceptable to the West. 
And following that, of course, the third level of cyber activity would be weapons that actually attack SCADA systems, bots or implants. These activities, of course, would be highly damaging, very upsetting to the West, and likely met with some sort of response. In a sense, the Internet is a sort of gateway drug at the moment for Al-Qaeda, a sort of marijuana, where it's already established a certain level of presence and likely is to move to the next level, and then the worst level. Jihadists internationalized their fight through the cyber world. In a sense, the cyber world is flat. Individuals worldwide who might not have access to Al-Qaeda's message can see it anywhere. As you know, uh, an Al-Qaeda senior member in the Middle East could radicalize someone in Mexico, Texas, Paris. In fact, given the very heavy kinetic stress that the West has placed on Al-Qaeda, you could argue that the Al-Qaeda senior leadership is nothing more than a pornography studio where they produce this junk and post it on the West but their role as a planner, an operator, a divisor of plots and implementer has really faded away. In a sense, all they do is inspire or project image worldwide. And in fact, I'd even argue the very senior leadership of Al-Qaeda are in a sense pornography pimps because they no longer plan anything in, in a, at all. Instead, they just try to ask the, the rest of the world to share their ideology and act accordingly. For Al-Qaeda, terrorism is a form of performance art. It's the image that they are trying to sell now in addition to the activity. And that image is delivered through the web. Some have um, some have coined this phenomenon a cyber insurgency. How do you defeat a cyber insurgency? Well, first, you don't show the performance art. Largely, the West is, well, at least the media in the United States, has seemed to have shown terrorism less and less. It may be a function of the president's agenda. It may be a, a, a strategic decision made by accident that's a good thing. Showing it, of course, advances the enemy's information operations. One element of warfare, perhaps Al-Qaeda's senior leadership only relevant element of warfare. The second way to defeat performance art is by showing your own. To counter message, to counter brand, to brand yourself and to counter brand your enemy. In a sense, Al-Qaeda has been de denied safe havens around the world, so now they've established virtual safe havens. But this means that the Internet is a sort of GPS for Al-Qaeda and for um, jihadist wannabes around the world. Anyone anywhere can be radicalized by merely going to the web, getting his fill, of the propaganda and message in the narrative of Al-Qaeda, if necessary, learn where to go to meet individuals in person around the world, and then return home. In fact, a study in the Journal of Social Behavior argues that the internet has fostered a sense of self in the community. In a sense, the, the internet is becoming the mentor for the local jihadist. As you may know, we've studied terrorism quite a bit in the United States, and we've tried to understand what makes an individual radical violent. As you may know, not every radical becomes violent, but one commonality that we know is that you need a small sense of community, a study group, and from that study group, an individual is afforded the support mechanism he or she requires to actually commit violence. The internet is becoming that mentor, that friend.
social networking is only going to make things much worse. And Al-Qaeda is already in social networks. Facebook, Bing, uh, Ning, um, their own social networking forums, these are tools of the jihadist today and are likely to be only furthered and developed in the future. File sharing, talking through uh, uh, Web 2.0 technologies, these will only make our efforts at counterterrorism more complicated. And worse, since the internet presence already exists and they are already in a sense uh, infected with this tool, we may see Al-Qaeda move from simple web 1.0 technologies, 2.0 social networking, to more destructive code, jihadist weapons, cyber weapons. But unlike WMD issues, WMD weapons, delivery of such programs may be much easier, have little to no lead time required, and may not require any particular skill. So far to date, Al-Qaeda is not terribly interested in cyber weapons, probably for two reasons. One, they weren't spectacular enough. As you may know, Al-Qaeda was determined to follow on, to follow 9-11 with an equally spectacular attack. And two, technically, it's been a bit beyond their reach, but perhaps less so these days. Foreign governments, of course, are big actors in cyberspace and developers of cyber weapons. Foreign governments like Iran have significant cyber efforts and significant cyber weapons. But unlike WMD issues, where we have a lead time, where we could actually watch a weapons development program, say, in Iran, cyber weapons don't necessarily have such a lead time. A cyber weapon can be given to a member of al-Qaeda, developed elsewhere. Access can be given by a foreign government rather than developed. Traditionally, WMD issues were tracked historically. Not only the weapon was developed, but delivery mechanisms were tracked. With cyber weapons, we have so no, uh, no such luxury. Space, time, geography are no longer defenses for the West. Overnight, Al-Qaeda could become a cyber weapon power if it were given a weapon. There's some reason to suspect that this is coming. In the latest edition of Inspire, the uh, propaganda mechanism of Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, the authors call, uh, called for individual jihadists to merely spread oil slicks on street corners and to nail nails into boards to create flat tires in cars. It's pathetic. Individual deaths. Now Al-Qaeda is calling to kill individual soccer moms and old men. It's a far cry from their 9-11 days. So if they've given up their interest in a spectacular follow-on to 9-11, what will prevent them from any sort of disruption using, say, a cyber weapon? Today, Al-Qaeda seems to be calling for any attack anywhere, even individuals picking up a weapon. And should Al-Qaeda link up with a hacker group like Anonymous, a very capable hacktivist group, such weapons can be provided overnight. And it may not even be done officially by the group as some sort of sanctioned act. Maybe a single individual is tricked to give a weapon or is individually sympathetic. And it's not inconceivable that a state like Iran would give Al-Qaeda a weapon just to make trouble for the West to create an asymmetrical war for the United States. And imagine the forensic, forensics involved in such an activity. You might have an Iranian weapon, or maybe even a Russian or Chinese weapon, acquired by Iran, given to Al-Qaeda, delivered by an individual through networks around the world, from addresses in Southeast Asia, Canada, Texas. Regardless of who took responsibility for the weapon, it would be a nightmare for the West to understand who created the weapon or who to, who to retaliate against.
So in general, Al-Qaeda doesn't need to develop necessarily anything. But you can already see a trend towards developing their own expertise, which suggests they would take such aid if offered, but if not, they're going to try to train themselves in these weapons. The legal advisor for the U.S. Department of State has claimed that international law applies to cyberspace. Cyber activities can constitute the use of force. A state may respond to a computer network attack by exercising its right to national self-defense. The law of armed conflict applies to cyber tools in hostilities. In other words, cyber warfare is warfare. Trotsky was right. Cyber Jubahad is a concern for everyone. Thank you very much. זה היה יום ארוך, מי שהצליח לשרוד אותו, כל הכבוד. אנחנו מודים לכם שהגעתם אלינו היום, ואנחנו מאוד נשמח לארח אתכם גם בשנה הבאה בכנס הסייבר שלנו. תודה וערב טוב.